Welcome back. This is Module 6, uh, Deviance and Social Control. So in this first lecture, we're just going to be basically coming up with the definitions we need to uh, examine this in more detail. So the very first definition we should talk about is, what is deviance? Uh, sociologically, a very simple explanation, deviance is basically the violation of a norm. And as we remember from our earlier module, norms are behaviors which support our values. So uh, any behavior or any violation of any behavior in a society is considered deviance. Okay? Uh, one of the most important uh, things that we need to as sociologists look at when we look at the topic of deviance is changing our uh, socially defined ideas about what the word deviance means. Um, typically when you hear the word deviance or variations of it like deviant especially when it's applied to human beings or their behavior. Uh, if you were to call someone deviant, clearly that's got a lot of negative connotations. It's you know, an insult to call someone deviant. Um, and when we hear the word deviance, we have uh, lots of negative connotations that go along with that word. Typically, when we think about the societal uh, definition of deviant, we think bad, okay? or in its more extreme form, evil. Okay? Um, sociologically, that's not what it means, so we need to, to rework our definitions. The violation of any norm is a deviation. Okay? So we can think about it in terms of a continuum of the behavior, and we can realize that uh, when we just look at deviance as being a violation of a norm, that can mean very minor all the way up to very serious behaviors. So the example I give a lot of times in class is if I were to walk into class and, you know, before class, just stop and say, uh, you know, I need to get something off my chest on my way over here. Uh, I needed to cross the street, but instead of walking to the street corner, I just cut right across the middle of the street. Um, I apologize to you. Uh, I hope you can take it in your heart to forgive me and continue to allow me to instruct you. And of course, everybody's faces would be blank, thinking, why is he talking like this? And I'd say, well, I violated a norm. I broke a rule in society. I was guilty of the crime of jaywalking. And of course, then, you know, we can realize that that is a factual statement, but the overwhelming thought still generally is, so what? Or who cares? Okay? Whereas if I said, okay, um, I, uh, different scenario, come into I would come into class and say, uh, I need to get something off my chest. Uh, this weekend I was out at a bar and uh, overindulged and then got into a car and drove home. Okay? Uh, once again, the reaction, depending on you know, uh, people's perspectives, uh, would probably be more along the lines of, okay, that was, that's a lot more serious. You really could have hurt somebody, you could have hurt yourself. That's, you know, if you'd gotten in trouble, uh, if you'd gotten stopped, you'd probably you know, be dealing with a lot more repercussions. So we tend to kind of, again, up the scale here a little bit, uh, whereas jaywalking, very minor, something like a DUI or, you know, driving under the influence, you know, falls much more toward this end. Um, and then, of course, you know, third scenario, uh, I would say, oh, you know, I come into class and say, uh, over the weekend I got arrested for murder. Right? Uh, clearly much more serious violation of a norm. So we can clearly see that although the, the, the overall definition of deviance is violation of a norm, there's a pretty large continuum of behavior that we would put from, again, kind of more mild or minor to all the way up to serious of how we regard uh, that behavior, which brings us to this very important definition here, the relativity of deviance. So when we talk about the relativity of deviance, what we're basically saying is that it is not the act itself, but society's reaction to an act that determines deviance. Okay? So, sociologically, no action by itself is either good or bad. Um, you know, serious or not serious, uh, deviant or not deviant. It depends on the reaction of society to that. And like I said, we can clearly see, while all three of those examples I gave you were violations of norms, uh, violations of actual laws in our society, 
jaywalking, DUI, murder. Okay? What determines how serious we think they are is the reaction of society to those behaviors. Okay? And we could even make the statement when we talk about relative mean deviance, I'll use the third example I gave, murder. Okay? Murder we consider very serious, one of the most serious crimes that you can commit. And when you say, what is murder? Murder is taking a human life. But if I were to say to you, instead of describing it as a murder, and I were to say, um, while I was an active member of the military serving in a conflict overseas, I killed another human being. The reaction you would have then would be probably much different than the one that if I said, I got into a fight and killed somebody. So at home, during a a time of not war. So in one situation, society would say, you are a murderer, and I would probably receive a very serious uh, penalty for that. Whereas in the other situation, the exact same behavior would actually be a situation in which I would probably be rewarded. So again, the relativity of deviance involves understanding society's reactions to the uh, behaviors that we do. Okay? So now when we talk about deviance, we can break it down into uh, some other types. Certainly we can say that there are what we call proactive or purposeful deviations. In other words, times in which we knowingly or purposely break rules in society. A lot of times when we take the time to write a rule down, we call that a law. And typically when we say that we're breaking laws, we are committing crimes. Okay? So a crime is generally a you know, uh, an example of what we would call purposeful or intentional deviation. In other words, you know that something is a rule in society, especially if it's a rule that's you know, been uh, taken time to have written down, and you knowingly break it, such as the examples I gave you, jaywalking, DUI, uh, uh, and murder. All those are things that our society has said, we're going to take the time to write these rules down so they become laws, and then when we break them, we're committing crimes purposeful, intentional deviation. However, we could also make the point that some deviations are unintentional or not purposeful, and we tend to call those uh, stigma. So in other words, these are passive forms of deviation. So the example I sometimes give is if you go to your typical building and you walk inside and you want to get to the second floor, most of us probably walk uh, right over to the stairs and walk right up. And I would say, why are there stairs in a building? Well, stairs provide us with access to the upper floors. But specifically, when I say, why stairs? We would probably say that because for the majority of people in society, the norm is walking. So people walk into a building and walk up a flight of stairs. But I would say, can, does that mean everyone in society can do that? No, of course, we know there are some people uh, through injury, disease, disability, are not able to use stairs. So if that person, uh, say a person in a wheelchair, were to enter the building and desire to go uh, to the second floor, that person might wheel themselves over, realize that there's a set of stairs, and say, I can't do that, and search for an elevator. And technically, that person is being deviant by not being able to take the stairs. Now, when I say that, and I, you know, again, if I was sitting in a classroom full of people, you see people's facial reactions. And the reaction to me calling a person in a wheelchair deviant is usually something along the lines of, oh, you can't say that. Well, if that's your reaction, then you are still using the connotation of negativity when we're talking about deviation. You're not using the sociological definition. A person who can't walk up a flight of stairs is violating the norm in society, was that the majority of people in society can walk up and down stairs on their two legs. So that's called a stigma, okay? a passive form of deviation uh, beyond people's control. So uh, there are a lot of things in our society that are violations of norms that sometimes we have absolutely no control over whatsoever. So um, being born uh, into a, a family, a crime family, so if you are the son or daughter of a, of a mafia crime boss, okay, you would clearly uh, be subject to society's interpretations of your family's behavior, but you had nothing to do with that. So that would be, again, a stigma or a passive form of deviation. 
So when we talk about this idea of deviance and the violation of norms, one of the things we can say is that norms allow, so these rules in society, allow for social order. And social order is the idea that human beings appreciate and are more comfortable when they can predict other people's behavior. So when we're operating out there in society and we're interacting with other human beings, we feel most comfortable and most safe when we have a pretty good idea, we know how other people are going to act or behave. And when people act or behave in unexpected or unpredictable ways, that tends to make us very uncomfortable. So when we look around society and we ask ourselves, why do we have so many rules and why do we have so many laws, the, the most basic answer is that allows for what we call social order. And that uh, makes us uh, feel pretty good about ourselves and pretty good about society to have that social order, that, that expected behavior. So one of the reasons perhaps a deviance gains this sense of negativity or this negative social connotations is generally deviance can sometimes be also referred to as unexpected or unpredictable behavior, which again, in a lot of situations, makes us feel very uncomfortable as social creatures. So we seek a form of social control. Okay? Society uh, seeks to put limits on our behavior to make us more predictable, to make our behavior more orderly so that it, it, it uh, uh, makes interactions between us easier. Uh, and when we say that social control, we're talking about means of uh, enforcing norms. So how do we get people to follow the rules? And we can say that there are both formal and informal ways uh, of getting people to follow and that, uh, rules, and that there are also uh, positive and negative ways of getting people to follow the rules. And we call those sanctions, which we mentioned in an earlier module. When we talk about sanctions, we talk about it in terms of values, norms, and sanctions. Uh, so we could talk about negative sanctions, in other words, punishments. So when somebody does something that we don't approve of, whether or not it's an actual law, like jaywalking, so society can say, we saw you cross the street in the middle. Uh, we've already established that you're not supposed to do that. So a person in authority will then write me a ticket for that. Okay. Uh, again, DUI, we don't want you doing that type of behavior because it's likely to uh, engage or uh, result in someone's uh, uh, injury or death, so we are going to enforce that with uh, negative sanctions. Again, tickets, jail time, probation, all those other kind of things, and of course murder. Uh, in most cases, one of the uh, most serious types of deviation, we are going to take you out of society and put you in a secure area where you can't hurt anybody else. So those are all examples of negative sanctions, and for the large part, very formal. Okay? All those, uh, you know, again, reactions to crime uh, are you know, formal negative sanctions. Informal basically just refers to uh, the ways that we let people know that they're not operating in, in an expected way. So uh, again, you might see someone jaywalking across the street, or, or worse, you're a driver and a pedestrian walks out in front, okay, you might not have the authority to write that person a ticket or get them in trouble, but by blowing your horn or perhaps using uh, certain uh, words or, or gestures, we talked about earlier, the, the power of gestures, you might let that person know that they are operating in a way that you don't approve of and that would be considered an informal negative sanction. But we can also talk about positive sanctions uh, there are ways that we enforce or gain social control by rewarding people. So, uh, again, it can be formal or informal. Uh, when we talk about the idea of norms uh, in our society, again, value, norms support values. So going all the way back to our lecture about values and norms, we could say that in our society, uh, industriousness, um, productivity are all considered American values. So we could say that it's, a, it's basically a norm in our society that people have a job, okay, and that they are engaged in something which is productive and contributing to society. And what would the formal positive sanction to that be? Well, when you go to your job and perform the tasks assigned to you, at the end of the week you expect a paycheck. Right? So we would say that being paid, being given some type of material benefit for the job you do would be an example of a formal positive sanction. And then informal positive sanctions are just those things we do 
that let people know that we appreciate the way they behave or that they are uh, doing things in an expected, predictable manner and that makes us feel comfortable. So uh, once again, if you were driving down the street and you saw a pedestrian about to step into the road and then suddenly step back onto the curb and you know, realize that they're not going, you know, that they were going to cut off traffic or something like that, uh, you may smile at them, you may wave to them, that pedestrian, you know, when you walk, when you see them walk down to the crosswalk and press the button and then you, know, you get the yellow light and the red light, you stop and wave them past and everybody's happy with each other. Those are examples of informal positive sanctions. Okay? So just to recap, deviance, sociological definition, neither good nor bad. Okay? All behavior, uh, according to sociologists, is not rated on a, a scale of good or bad. It's rated on a scale of deviance, relativity of deviance. So uh, what is society's reaction to that behavior? Um, and this obviously, in some ways, kind of uh, goes up in the face of some other disciplines. So if, uh, if you are a psychologist or a psychiatrist, uh, again, there's much more uh, uh, difference in definitions. Those uh, professions or those disciplines seek to explain deviance by looking at the uh, biological or chemical makeup of individuals. What is wrong with that person? Um, are there genetic predispositions or uh, personality disorders uh, that influence people's behavior? Whereas sociology, again, tends to look not at the individual, but at the social structure. So uh, we're going to take a look in the next uh, couple of lectures about different ways that, um, or different perspectives of looking at uh, deviance and we're going to look at the social forces that influence our behavior when it comes to our definitions of deviant behavior.